Every day, cars swiftly drive past the Milford State Monument, located along Highway 29, eight miles west of New Ulm. It is a memorial to the 53 men, women, and children who died here on August 18, 1862. On the morning of August 18th, Milford came under attack by Dakota Indians. And earlier on the morning of August 18th, the Dakota Indians had attacked the Lower Sioux Agency. And from the Lower Sioux Agency, they moved down the Cottonwood River and came into Brown County. And Milford, being next to the reservation, was the first area in Brown County to come under attack. And many of the settlers in Milford at that time were busy working in their fields. This was harvest time. So many of the narratives talk about them being out in the fields or being at the breakfast table, uh, completely taken by surprise with the attacks. The Dakota didn't seem to make any differentiation between whether they were going to kill the heads of the household, the males, or the females. They were very indiscriminate in Milford, killing the men, the women, the children, and then burning the cabins. And as the cabins came under attack, because this was such a close community, those who managed to escape warned other people at other cabins, and all of these people began to flee into New Ulm for safety. The junior pioneers placed a small tablet out there in 1912 for the 50th anniversary of the Dakota War, and the Junior Pioneer Organization is an organization of direct descendants of the first settlers. And so in 1912, they placed a plaque out there that simply listed the names of those who had lost their lives in Milford. And then people in the area felt that this wasn't really enough for what had happened out in Milford, and they began to plead with the state to put a memorial there. So in 1929, the state actually erected the beautiful monument that is out there that you see today. The Granite Monument was created by the Perkins and Kratzert Monument Company of St. Paul. It was carved by an Italian sculptor and was originally intended for another customer. When he changed his mind, the company offered it to the Milford Monument Commission at half price. But whatever the monument's original destination, its symbolism expressed thoughts that the Monument Commission wished to convey in this peaceful rural setting. The cross represents tragedy. The three steps represent the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. At the base, a passion flower represents sacrifice, while the figure is known as memory, her right hand about to drop a lily, a symbol of purity and resurrection as a last tribute to the departed. But if the figure represents memory, how do we take into account the memories of the Dakota? Dr. Eldon Lawrence grew up on the Sisseton Wahpeton Reservation in South Dakota and later had a distinguished career in education. His great grandfather, Lorenzo Lawrence, is known for having saved the lives of three women and 13 children during the 1862 U.S. Dakota War. Yeah, when. Uh... Like I said, when I used to pass by here, uh, all I'd see is, is the monument and, and give it not, a, not give it any thought, just go on. But when I found out what, it, what really took place here, uh, I don't go by this, this road and pass it anymore without giving some thought to what happened here and the tragedy that uh, comes with the war. The innocent people, the innocent lives that are lost uh, during a conflict. And I, I think in terms of soldiers, uh, they go to war because they expect, to, they expect that they could be killed. They expect that that's going to happen. Innocent people generally don't have that, that idea, you know, that they're going to be harmed until it happens and all of a sudden they become uh, victims uh, of something that they didn't really have that much to do with, you know, outside of being a member of one side or the other. And I see that, that here. That's what strikes me here, because I've, I've seen a couple of places where uh, I've seen the aftermath of war, 
and how the people are still affected by that years afterward. And uh, I can just imagine that this spot being being here uh, with what happened uh, had to be in the mind of the people for quite a while. The monument it should be uh, it should be documented. The whole history of that should be documented in such a way that people uh, understand it fully. And the monument should be a reminder, and that's what it. That's what a monument is. A reminder. This is what happened right here, and people driving by here should. Uh, uh, be made aware that uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in our moment of history, uh, something something that shouldn't have happened happened. And by looking at the monument, you should say that would never happen again in our in our day and age. Uh, and yet, we go by this like I did, drive by it day after day. You see cars going by here all the time. How many of them have been bothered to think about what happened here? And uh, I think that history, if it's allowed to tell its own story, would yell at us and say, hey, stop and look and listen. Here's, here's what, something you need to know. And, uh, and it's not happening. And I think a monument should, uh, it should be here, but it should be in such a way that people need to take time, they need to take Ten minutes out of their journey to stop here and think about it, you know, and uh, and then maybe, just maybe, some of those people wouldn't have died in vain.